next thing I want to show you how to do on Procreate is work the symmetry tool. Symmetry typically means something has a, div a division down the center and everything on each side of the division is the same. So kind of like a face, normal, you know, if you go right down the middle of a face, typically the eyes tend to be the same, the mouth is the same on either side. Now that's not a perfect example because actually human faces aren't normally perfectly symmetric. The eyes can actually be a little bit different, but you get the idea of what I'm, I'm saying. Um, something that's supposed to be the same on two sides of the center line. And there's a lot of cool things that you could use symmetry for. One thing is you could use it to draw some kind of really detailed design or pattern, but basically you only have to draw half of it and the other half will copy itself on the other side of the center line. So here is what I am, let me demonstrate what I mean here. We're gonna go up to our wrench, which we use a lot for choices and creating different things. And this time we're going to need to go over to the canvas option. And when you get to the canvas option, some, some different options will pop up. You're going to want to click on drawing guide right now. It has this little button to turn it on and off right now. It's off. You're going to want to turn it on. When I did that, did you notice this grid that appeared behind me? So the grid, that is just for, that by itself doesn't have to be used for symmetry. That would just be for maybe if you want to create like a Minecraft art or some kind of pixel, pixel art would be a good example. You could use this grid as just a guideline for getting your little boxes really perfect. But that is actually, we're gonna take it a step further to work with symmetry. Once you turn on the drawing guide tool, now edit drawing guide is available as an option. When it was off, you couldn't tap on that edit drawing guide, but it becomes an option when I turn it on. So now I want to go in and edit drawing guide and some more options have now popped up. This is similar a little bit in a way it's similar to when we do a copy and paste and the options pop up at the bottom but you'll see 2D grid, isometric, perspective. We're not gonna mess with any of those today. What we wanna do is symmetry. So I'm gonna click on symmetry and now it's blue. Now you can see my drawing grid went away, but you can see a, a center line here. So let me go ahead and I've got what I want so I can hit done. And now, yeah, the line that Procreate inserts for symmetry is perfectly in the middle. If you're just drawing a line on your own, it can be hard to figure out where exactly is the middle, but symmetry tool will put it perfectly in the middle for you. So let's now, let's look at my brush. I think I'm gonna go to inking and pick out my technical pin, one of my favorites. Now, everything that I draw on one side of the line is going to mirror itself. So it'll be exactly the same, but backwards on the other side of the line. Let me show you. So I've got a really nice little heart there and I do need to be on the layer, the drawing guide layer in order to do this. I can, you know, add in little, all kinds of little details. If I wanted to make some kind of crazy detailed pattern, this is a cool way to do it because, like I said, you essentially, you only have to draw half of the drawing and Procreate will draw the other half for you. But also anything on the other side is going to be mirrored. So it's going to turn it the opposite direction. So if I draw a little moon, it's going to make it backwards on the other side. Therefore, if I write a word on the opposite side, it's going to be backwards. There might be some creative reason sometime that you want the words to be backwards like that. That might be cool. But one really cool way I can think of to add symmetry, let me go ahead and I'm just gonna clear what I drew. I did that by 
selecting it from my layer options. And like I said, a lot of times we think of a face as symmetrical, maybe not perfectly, but typically we want it to look pretty close on one side as it does the other. And if you draw faces and characters, you know that that can be tricky. That can be a little, I've had a lot of frustration when learning to draw with trying to get an eye to look like the other eye. Such a pain, right? Especially if you get one really, really good, but then the whole picture is ruined because you couldn't get the other one to look like it. So this is a really cool tool for that because I just have to draw one eye and then Procreate will so kindly make the other eye look exactly like it. And as you can see, I'm just kind of drawing quickly here, but you, you can take your time just like you would any uh, piece of art. And, you know, you can use different brushes. I'm just using the pen to, so that you can see what I'm doing. But, you know, you could use whatever preferred drawing brushes you like. Uh, let's see, let's try the nose. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you're interested in drawing these really cool symmetrical drawings, the symmetry tool is just really awesome for this. So as you can see, look how quickly I drew this little face. And if I had not drawn it with the symmetry tool, odds are the two halves of the face would look a little bit off, a little bit mismatched. So that is a really cool way to use the symmetry tool. And you can use it for the whole body too. Um, if, you're, if you like drawing characters, symmetry is awesome for character creation. And then whenever you're done with it, you simply go back and turn the drawing guide back off. And after that, you should be able to create more layers and color in your drawing however you choose. Yeah, and it won't, it'll no longer be symmetry. You, because once you get your outline, you may not, you may wanna just color it in. And at that point, you don't need the symmetry tool anymore. So that's a really cool application, the symmetry tool. Now let's talk a little bit about some cool things that you can do using photography on Procreate. So we talked in the past a little bit about how to import photography or photos into your drawing, either for reference or maybe you want to actually use the make art with the photo. So that, let's explore that a little bit more. Now I'm going to go up to my wrench and I'm going to go back to my add tools and I'm going to insert a photo. And we've done this before for reference photos. I'm going to go ahead and insert this photo of my house. Now I would like this to be pretty big. I want it to take up a good bit of the screen. Now what I can do is later on after I'm done with this artwork, I can save my artwork and then I can just edit, I can resize it to where I get rid of those white borders. So for now, I'm not going to worry about the white borders. One thing that you can do, you've probably heard of the term filters with photography. A lot of times when people post, you know, like selfies or just pictures of anything online, sometimes they'll put filters on it to make the, give the picture a certain effect. They might want to make it look like really bright and cheerful or maybe kind of gloomy, something, you know. So filters are really cool with Procreate. You can actually kind of create your own filters. You got to be creative about it. But um, so here's, let's use this picture of my house as an example. And I'll just give you some ideas for how you could create a filter. I would just go, I'm going to make a whole new layer now. And I'm going to, maybe I, I've talked in the past about how I really like rainbow type effects on things. So let's make a rainbow. Let's try and make a filter over my drawing and make it rainbow. 
So let's see here. What do I want to use for this? I think I'm just gonna try this bonobo chalk. I don't even know what that looks like. Let's try it out. Let's see what it looks like. I, again, I'm double checking that I'm not drawing on the photo. I'm on a layer over it. And let's do kind of a rainbow color, but we'll do even brighter colors. All right, I want it to be bigger because I'm basically gonna cover this whole photo. <sighs> Yellow. Green. Blue. A little bit of purple. Okay, so just that's kind of cool. But this is a photo, so we're going for a filter, not for an artsy look here. So now I'm just gonna experiment with my blend modes and see how I can, let's go up to multiply. Hmm, that's kind of neat. Some of them, when you use the blend mode, it does it, it'll make it look a little more subtle you won't see it as much. And so, depending on what you're going for, that might be kind of cool. Um, let's see, screen. Oh, okay, so overlay. That is kind of cool, I like that. And then maybe I can add to it a little bit. Maybe I can add a new layer. Let's go to true white now. And let's go to textures. Just see what we've got here. How about abstract? Oh, okay, abstract. I like this Storm Bay brush. So I'm gonna make it kind of big and I'm just going to color over my drawing. And then I kind of like it the way it is actually, but let's go ahead and try some work with the blend modes. That's kind of neat. Oh, that's kind of neat, brightens it up. And like I've mentioned before with the blend modes, it's really fun, ooh, I like it. Cause it's just like, when you see it, you'll know. You'll know it's what you're looking for. It's like a lot of times you don't actually know what you're looking for, but when you see it, you'll know. So I really love this cool artsy filter over my photo and like I said I would then save this and crop it which I'll show you in a minute how to do that but yeah so that's one way that you can use procreate for your photography another thing you could do I'm going to temporarily get rid of my filter now now I'm thinking let's make something artsy with my house this is a real picture of my house but now let's turn it into something like cool and creative and artsy Maybe, let's go do my inking, get my technical. Actually, I think I want to do sketching with this. So I'm going to get my 6B pencil. And I have, I want a true white so I can tap on my background just to turn myself white here. And what if I have giant flowers growing out of my house? And what if I have a big crow just kind of perched on my house? And what if there's a big silly sun in the sky? Or, you know, I could take a picture of myself and draw great big butterfly wings on myself. Um, and then, you know, you could do all kinds of silly stuff. And then you could also apply your filter still. And that is even more cool. So all kinds of fun stuff that you can do for, with photography. And we also talked the other day too about creating oil paintings with photography. 
So, or it doesn't even have to be oil paintings. Maybe I love this picture of my house, but maybe I want to go ahead and just draw my house, but I'll just draw right over it. And I, maybe I like the whole pencil thing. So I just make new layers and I just start recreating my house. However, I care to draw it. The oil portrait, pencil drawing. You could use your color fill option. And then, you know, we already drew our houses, but th that was freestyle. You can get it really, 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 really perfect doing it this way because you can copy right over it. So those are some ideas for just really cool things that you can do with, with photography on Procreate. So back to saving, I mentioned that I might, I want, if I like how I change my photo, I'm gonna wanna save it and crop it, which means cut off this white border that I don't want here. So I'm gonna actually get rid of that thing. I'm going to make the opacity full color again on my house. And I'm gonna bring back the little doodles that I made. And you might have lots of different reasons that you may want to save your artwork. What I'm gonna do this time, I just, my purpose for saving it right now is that I want to edit it. I wanna kind of cut off the edges. So there's all kinds of other reasons you might want to save. Maybe you want to, maybe you make a book and you want to save all the pages together so that you can kind of print it out like you would a book, or you could send it in an email to somebody to look at. So you might want to um, save for that reason also, or you make something for school and you want to print it out, something like that. So there's all kinds of reasons you might want to save your artwork. What you want to do is you're going to cl click your wrench. Everything important is in the wrench tool, it seems like, right? And you're going to stay on your add or click on your add section. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. You're going to, once you're in your wrench section, now you're going to go to the share section. Share, share in this case just means either send it to somebody or save it on your device. In this case, it's just one photograph. So I'm, I just want to save it onto my iPad and then fix it up. So in this case, I'm going to choose a JPEG, JPEG. That JPEG is just the type of photo. So then I'm going to just go, when I said that, it gave me all these different options. There's also an option to print. You might want to print it instead of save it, whatever your choice is but I'm just gonna hit save image and that puts it on my iPad. Now I actually need to leave Procreate and go to my photo gallery. And here is my picture that I just saved. So now I'm just gonna edit it to get that, those edges off that I don't need. So I'm just gonna click edit up in the corner and then the cropping tool where you cut off pieces of your, your photos right here on the left, this little square, and then it'll outline your drawing and you can just kind of drag the edges down to wherever you want them. And then once you have it the way you want it, you can hit done. And then look, this is a really cool filter that I made myself. It could be, I could use it again. I could swap out the picture of my house and just put a picture of myself or whatever else that I want to. So creating filters is really cool application on Procreate. Now I'm going to show you another thing that I, this is one of my favorite things to do with Procreate and it's called creating a repeating pattern or you might hear it called a seamless pattern. What a seamless or repeating pattern is, is you're just gonna draw a small chunk of a pattern, but you have to draw it in such a way that if you tile together like a bunch of puzzle pieces of the drawing, the pattern would keep on repeating. And I've showed you my Redbubble store before to kind of give you an idea of some of the things I use Procreate for. So now I want to show you an example. This is a repeating pattern. I actually only drew this little 
Halloween type pattern once. I only drew the little witch skull, pumpkin bat, and the word boo one time. And then, but I made it in such a way that once I uploaded it into the red bubble, it makes it repeat. And you can kind of see the little block that has the witch, the skull, the word boo. I just drew one of those little blocks. And then it can repeat perfectly a million different times, which is so cool because of all the cool things that can be made. You could make, this is a shower curtain. You could make clothing like leggings that have patterns on them or masks, face coverings. Um, there's bedding like comforters. So there's all kinds of really cool things to make repeating patterns for, or you could make them like coloring pages or just works of art. So this is what a repeating pattern is. And it is actually, believe it or not, incredibly easy to do. Let me show you how to make one on Procreate. With repeating patterns, I normally create them as a square. You might later repeat the pattern into a rectangle shape, but it's easiest to create a repeating pattern with using a square canvas. So when I'm in my gallery and I click my little plus sign, I'm gonna just select squares, the very top option on mine. And now you see I have this canvas that is square shaped. And sorry, I already made a line in it. Okay, I'm just going to let's make a let's make a really simple, just a flower pattern. That would probably be something pretty simple to draw. So I'm going to start this pattern with just some plain old little flower. So let's make a pink flower with pink petals. So the important thing to note, it does not matter where on your screen you draw it, except do not draw it going off the edge of the screen. So you can see that this little, this little um, flower, it's close to the edge, but no parts of it go off the edge of the drawing. That's really critical. When you're making a repeating pattern, you cannot draw anything going off the edge. So let's add in one more. How about just a little purple heart? And like a couple polka dots. Okay, so now I've got a couple little cutesy things in my drawing. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna hit my, my layers and I am going to, how do I do this? So next I've got, obviously this is not my whole pattern. I'm gonna add more to it. But in order to make it a repeating pattern, there's a certain way we have to do it. So this is just gonna be the first part of my pattern. Now I need to access my layers and create a new layer on top of it. And then with whatever color, it doesn't matter, but I've got blue selected here. So I'm just gonna turn the whole layer blue. And then I'm going to go back to that blue layer now and get my blend tools and bump back the opacity so that I can see what's underneath. And once I do that, I'm gonna hit my layer tools. And instead of merge down, we've talked about merge down before, but instead of using that, we're gonna combine down instead. So you know that when you use merge down, your layers like merge together. But when we used combine down, it combined the layers into a group, but they are not stuck together. The next step you'll need to do, once you have this new group, you're gonna tap on new group, slide it to the left. And this is just the same as layers where you can duplicate or delete it. You're gonna duplicate it. So now I have two of the same exact group. So whichever one first, it doesn't matter. 
I already have this group selected. So what I'm going to do now is hit my cursor and it's going to it's going to now select the whole group. And you're going to see down here at the bottom it's it's um it's important for this that you have uniform selected and you have snapping selected. If you don't have snapping turned on, go ahead and tap it so that it turns blue. That's important for this particular task. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to now move this group to where maybe half my flower is off the screen. I didn't wanna draw it that way, but I now that I'm moving it, I do wanna move part of it off the screen. Then I'm gonna unselect it. Now I need to go down to my other layer, my other group, select the group, now I'm going to hit my cursor so it's blinking and I'm going to move it the other direction. And now it should snap right in line with my first layer. Now, if sometimes if you don't do this right, you'll see like a little line down here and that means they they're not lined up perfectly, which will make it mess up your repeating pattern. So if that's the case, just undo it and try it again. But what I'm doing, I'll undo mine and try it, show you again. But I just selected it and I'm just moving it. See how when they're overlapping, you get that stripe there. That means they're overlapped and it's not right. You got to just carefully move it out. And if you have snapping turned on, it'll be pretty easy to get them lined up. Now I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to get rid of those little blue layers that I made. I just put those there so that we could see it when we were trying to line it up, but we don't actually need those. And I'm also going to go ahead and merge all of the stuff down. I just pinched it and merged it. Now I'm just going to add in some more little things into my, my little art piece here. How about let's do like a little smiley face. And how about maybe a star, little star. And it doesn't even matter where you put it. You can, as long as nothing goes off the edge, you don't draw anything off the edge. We're gonna move stuff off the edge, but you just can't draw it off the edge. Okay, I think that's pretty good for now. So now I'm going to, Go back to my layers, make a new one, flood the layer with color, but bump back the opacity so that I can see what's underneath. Make my tap on my layer tools and combine down so that it forms a group. And then I'm going to swipe left on the group and copy it, duplicate it. Now I'm going to use my cursor to select. Now, before I moved left and right, this time I'm gonna move up and down. So just a little bit, just to nudge it off the screen for that one. Then I'll select the other group with my cursor and I will drag it down. And here's an example, see how there's the little line that tells me I did not line it up perfectly enough. That's why you kind of flood the layer because if you don't flood the layer with a color, you won't see that little line. So I just have to undo and then I can go back and try it again. You also could possibly see white off to the edges if you don't um, line it up properly, but in my case, I see no white, I see no little line in the middle, so I know that I've got them, got it lined up really well. And so now I'm gonna delete my pink, whoops, I accidentally copied it. I'm gonna delete my pink layers. I'm gonna merge it all down again. And now I think I'll just add in some little shapes just to fill in the rest of this area. and I've got myself a cute little pattern. Now let me show you what happens when you repeat it. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead every I have to make sure everything's on the same layer. And you can see I just have this little square. I'm going to hit my cursor and select the whole layer. And I'm going to do my three fingers swipe and, and copy. Now I'm going to go back to my gallery and I'm going to create a rectangle shaped canvas. So you can see just, it's just like a regular piece of paper. And when I do my three finger swipe, swipe and paste, it's going to paste in my little square pattern. Let me go ahead and resize it by making it smaller because I want to fill this whole page with this repeating pattern. So I have made it smaller, I've slid it up into the corner. So I'm gonna unselect it. And now I'm just going to duplicate it, select it again, and now that duplicated layer, I'm going to move it over. And look how it perfectly lined up with the first layer. I can just keep doing this. I find this very satisfying. I love it when they snap in and line up like that. And now I've got the top row all together so I can just go ahead and merge these. Once they're merged, now I'll duplicate again. And now I can pull it down. And bam, It'll line up really nicely underneath too. You can duplicate it one more time. One more time should do it, should fill the whole page. So now look, I have this really cute repeating Repeating or seamless pattern, it fills up my whole page, it's adorable, but once you get the hang of the steps to create the repeating pattern, drawing the pattern is super easy because you just have to draw one little square of art and then you can use this for so many things. You could also use this to make really complicated coloring pages. You could use like your black technical pen and draw some kind of really crazy um, pattern but really you only drew one little square of it and then you repeat it all over the page and it turns into a really cool coloring page that way. Another thing that I use Procreate a lot for is resources for my classroom, which I have shown you before. And obviously you have some now from collecting my workbooks that I've made for you. But I want to show you how you, you can use this too for, for your school type resources, calendars, um, so maybe you're asked to use a graphic organizer to, to write a paper, an essay of some sort. You could create your own graphic organizer. Any kind of organizational thing. I love making calendars and lists and things like that. So this is a really cool thing that you could do. So this is just an example of a calendar for my kids' homeschool that I made. And you know, you might find something useful like that. Um, this is kind of a graphic organizer, just something to organize information of some sort. And, or maybe you could you, you can use Procreate to make cool slides, like for a Google slideshow or something like that. I find Procreate a little bit easier to work with to create a cool looking slide. And then you can just upload the whole thing into your Google slide, something like that. And this is just an example of, you know, art of a certain artist that I like, or you could make it your own art, you know, something, some kind of presentation that you would make for whatever reason for school. So if you are going to make something like this, you might want to save it in a different way. We talked about saving a photo and we also mentioned possibly saving a whole book. So let me show you how to do that with how to export or save or get your turn your drawings into a book and then get it out of Procreate, whether it's to send it in an email or save it on your device. Let me show you how. Okay, so this is a group of comic book page templates that I made in Procreate. Let's pretend that you said, hey, Miss Amanda, can you send me a booklet of your, com your blank comic book pages so that I can make my own comic book? And so what I want to do is I want to email you this file so that you can print it out and draw on it, okay? And it, especially with school type stuff, or if you like to make stories and write stories, 
you're, you may have lots of reasons why you want to email a booklet of some sort to people. And turning something into a book file or what's called a PDF file makes it a lot easier for me to send this to you and you can just hit print and print it right out whether rather than if I had to send you five individual pictures and then you had to open the picture and then you had to make it the right size to print the way you wanted it to that's much harder to do so making something into a book is is a really good thing to do if you want someone to be able to easily print out a lot of pages. So here's how you do this with easily on Procreate. We've talked before about how you can use the select tool to select whatever pictures you want. I want to make a book out of these comic book pages. So I've selected all five of them and now I'm going to hit share. And once I hit share, you have these different options, just like when we were saving a, a while ago, saving our pictures. So JPEG and PNG, those are photo options. So if you wanted to send like the photo of the house that I saved, I could, I could make one of those. But I'm wanting to make this an actual booklet that I send to you and all you have to do is click it once, send it to print and it's good. So I want to select PDF. PDF, if you just hit good quality, it's going to make you choose a quality. Just hit good and it prints great. It'll print out just fine. And at that point, you can either save it on your device, just like we did with the photo, or you might want to send it to somebody. And I, this is what I do most often. I email PDFs. So if you want to send it to somebody, you can just tell it to open up your mail and it'll attach it right to an email. And then I can just like email it to myself and then send it and it'll say export successful. That means that it, it, it sent. Then always make sure you hit your little X and X out of the, the selecting tool because you could accidentally delete stuff that you don't wanna delete. And then once I've done that, I can open up my email and there it is. There's my little document and then I can open it up and you can see there all the pages are together. All I have to do is send it to print. And if I had had to one by one attach each of those pictures as a photo and then email it to myself and then one by one I'd have to open all of those and then one by one I'd have to send it to print and it's a little bit of a pain, but with this just one click and I can print it or if you sent me something to read one click and then I can scroll through it just like a book. And it's all nice and organized and kept together. So those are, you know, if you want to use Procreate to make your lear learning resources for yourself in the classroom or make fun stuff like books and stories and comic books, there's awesome ways then that you can take it out of Procreate and do something else with it. Send it, post it online, save it on your iPad, whatever you want to do. So hopefully you've learned some helpful techniques in doing that.